Hello, I'm Mark from Geco Tutor, and I'm here with Practical Machinist for the final part of our Let's Program a Bush series. So we've finished the program so far, and now I want to look back over at different ways we can speed this up if we're doing mass production. So jumping right into it, the first thing I want to discuss is maybe swapping out our drills with something that can do all the drilling in one go. And that is a U-drill. Now a U-drill is a flat bottom drill that's tipped and one tip is offset so we can also use it to bore with. So what I would recommend to speed us up, if we're doing mass production, if we're doing thousands of parts, not so important if we only have 10 parts or so to do, is I would omit the center drill and the peck drill and use a U-drill instead. And if we need to rough bore, we can also use that U-drill. So this is a quick example of how I would write the program to do that. So we have here, um, the program is very similar to the program I wrote for the peck drill cycle. The only bit different is this part here. So here we're doing point to point drilling with our U-drill. So um, let's go over this line by line so you can see how I would program a U-drill. And this would mean we don't need to center drill our part or use pilot drills. We can go straight in with the U-drill. So for starting off, I bring the U-drill one millimeter from the face of the parts. Now the line above, I've always already rapided to a safe distance there at Z five millimeters. So we're gonna start off by the point where our drill is one millimeter off the face of the part. Then we're gonna drill down as usual using GO1, uh, Z move for our depth and a feed rate. Now, once we're down to depth, I'm gonna rapid that drill out again. So we're one millimeter away from the face of the part. So that's the initial drilling part done, but with U drills, we have that offset side of that tip so we can use it as a boring bar. Now, I wouldn't suggest we do the chamfers with the boring bar, or if you do, we do them at this stage, not when you're doing the center line drilling part, because we do need that tool to move into empty space if we're trying to chamfer with a U drill. So normally with chamfers, I would still follow up with a boring bar to do the chamfers and maybe finish bore to get a better surface finish. You know, it depends what our needs are for the surface finish of that bore. So I would come down to G00 there and wrap it back to the front of the part. Then we're gonna offset our U-drill by one millimeter. So I'm using a 15 millimeter U-drill for this and we got a 16 millimeter hole. So I'm offsetting by X by one millimeter. And then we can feed down and use that edge of the U-drill to finish bore and come down to the full length. Now I say finish bore, again, it depends on your material, it depends on the tips of your U-drill. It might not produce a good enough finish for a bore. If so, we would just follow up with a boring bar after. So once we've gone down to full depth with our tool offset, we can then come back down to the center line before we wrap it back out. This way we don't scratch that surface that our tip has just put a finish on. So once that's done, as the tool comes back out, I turn the coolant off, come back to a safe working distance and then send the tool home. So I would use a U-drill to skip the center drill and the peck drill cycles, as we can do both of these in one go and we can even use it to rough bore. Okay, another way we can speed this up. And now a picture that we have parts, say we have a thousand off, but then we have another thousand off of this bush with different diameters. Well, we don't need to write two separate programs for this. We can program with variables. So what we would do is at the start of the program, I define variables and say what those sizes are. So here variable 101 is our diameter um, A, which is 35 millimeters. Now, if we're making two parts, we can change that to the other part, which is 45 millimeters. So by just changing these three numbers at the start of the program, we can make a totally different sized bush. So how this works is our variables, instead of putting X dimensions, we would put our variables in there. So here you can see I'm calling upon variable 102, which we know equals 20 millimeters, because I've set that at the part of the program. So if we change that 20 millimeters to say 30 millimeters, it would cut that diameter at 30 millimeters and not 20. And we can also do maths with this as well. So here I've got my stock bar size at 50 millimeters and I'm saving that 50 millimeters under the variable 103. So when I recall it again later on, we can add to that, but here I've got variable 103 plus one. So we know that's going to cut uh, one millimeter over the size of our stock bar size. 
so 51 millimeters. So we can use our variables and then add to it and take away from them. That way we can use the variables within the program and we can achieve anything we want just with by adding a few of these variables. And if our parts are different materials, we can also change the speeds and feeds by using variables as well. Okay, so I go into a lot more about variables and programming like this over on my website with my advanced macro programming course. So if you want to know more, pop over to my website and see that. There's way more information there than I can explain in a short video. Okay, so another thing we looked at was subroutines. When we cut our roughing cycle, we used um, a subroutine that we recalled when we done our finishing cycle. But that only works within that one single program. <clears throat> if we got multiple programs and we wish to recall a subroutine, sub we would use a subprogram instead. So this is an example of how a subprogram would work. So on this line here, M98P0002, what this is doing is calling upon a program number, that's 0002, and then it's going to run that in place of the subroutine. So that's what a subprogram is. And subprograms work across multiple other programs, whereas a subroutine we can only call within the same program. So by calling a subprogram, we can have our profile of our parts saved in a separate file elsewhere on our machine and call upon that anytime we need. So if we're doing mass production parts and parts that are slightly different sizes, we can use all these techniques to really speed up uh, the programming process and it saves us a lot of time. And of course, if we make an amendment to one program, it would also amend the others if we're using this technique. So if you want to know more about CNC programming or you want to learn how to program G-Code, I have a group of courses over on my website at gcodetutor.com where I teach G-Code, CAD CAM, Machine Shop Maths, Machine Shop Theory, and also Health and Safety. So pop over to G-Code Tutor to learn more about G-Code programming.